there's another thing, you know, speaking of, you know, feeling powerful and confident, uh, I want to talk about more about self-defense and how to go about it. So recently, um, we, we all know, you know, the, the Hajime and the Shido, et cetera, it's not really reflective of what might happen on the street as altercation and aggression. So, you know, when something happens, there's no referee that's going to go Hajime, for example. Um, recently, I had the pleasure to talk with um, uh, Jiu-Jitsu master or teacher, uh, Pedro Valente, um, where he dedicates a lot of his uh, philosophy or, to, or his, you know, teaching uh, in the form of self-defense. And he told me about the five points that he follows. First one being um, Temiwaza, Nagewaza, Katamewaza. Uh, so he says something that's very important, surprise attacks. Uh, whatever it may be. And finally, you know, philosophy, ethics, uh, you know, the education, not just, you know, everything's physical. So very, very reflective of, you know, if you read Mind Over Muscle, you would see that uh, they are found within it or the game of jujitsu by Yukutani. Um, I want to talk about, for example, the, well, we have something in France called the 20 imposed. We have like 20 attacks. There are four different series of five attacks. Um, you have between striking, grabs, uh, and weapons, I believe, and also the attacks of Goshin Jutsu. My point is, is he said something to me that really uh, hit home in a sense. He said, these are something that we should constantly be training, uh, regardless of what your goal is, to be a champion, or we should all, you know, train this uh, aspect because eventually that's what it's for. Um, for example, the attacks of Goshin Jutsu, the attacks of the 20 imposed, uh, they should be done, in my opinion, regularly. Uh, just like, you know, if I do, you know, my serenage at yellow belt, say, it's not going to be my serenage at uh, go down, for example. Um, and the same for these self-defense attacks and how do I respond to them. I can be a white belt in them and I can be a black belt in them. And in order to really constantly evolve in them and really anticipate surprise attacks for, you know, for example, now if someone grabs me like this, my first yeah. response is going to be like, hey, that's Shido. And, you know, but th that's what happens on the streets, for example. Uh, I know that there's the um, fighting films, a Judo for Self-Defense, where they do like these grabs and chokes. And you see Yasuhiro Yamashita training as a student. Uh, but, you know, these seminars are done a few times a year. But again, it's in my opinion, there should be a constant curriculum. Not all of us are Olympic athletes. Um, for example, that's like saying, I'm going to do Uchimata three times a year and expect myself to be efficient. That's not going to happen. We know that. No. So is there in the works, maybe, I don't know, in the future, very similar to a mental health approach, but for self-defense, a curriculum that might, you know, help with this. Maybe every Saturday morning we can do these attacks and then finish off with just rounds of randori or whatever. Uh, is there something in the works of this? Might be. Well, First thing is, is that when it comes to self-defense, I mean, I, I, for me, it's about preparation anyway. Uh, so uh, preparation uh, builds confidence, you know, so the more efficient you are in your uh, whatever techniques they are, whether, whether it's nagikomi or, or um, grip fighting or, uh, or kumakata, uh, anything with attack and defense, is about how much you do. I mean, a practice doesn't make perfect. Of course, it makes permanent. It's, it, so it has to be good practice. It's important that it's good practice. I have a very dear friend of mine. He's a really a seventh dan karate guy. And uh, he does quite a lot in self-defense. And um, he's, um, so he came on quite a few of my courses to learn uh, close contact things. Uh, I think close contact is important because most uh, fighting situations end up very close and, you know, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, it's all over. It doesn't last that long, really. Um, but so he said to me, he said, there's only one thing that can prepare you for a street fight. And he said, and that's fighting in the street, <sighs> uh, you know, and and fight or flight comes in whether you're a seventh uh, degree uh, black belt or whether you are a yellow belt or whether you're a child or uh, somebody who's very experienced 
Uh, and uh, I found uh, that I have had certain situations where even with my ability, you know, that the fight or flight comes into, in, into play uh, in everyday life. And I think that you get certain people that are very good in, in self-defense that, uh, uh, that are in those situations more often. I'm not, you know, so actually uh, the more often for me, the better you know, it would be better. Uh, so I think that there are a couple of things. I think that it would be nice to have, I mean, we, we have anyway with the Gokio and with the different techniques from uh, Tachiwaza to, to Niwaza, the transition. Transition, of course, is absolutely imperative. Uh, a lot of people don't talk about the transition, but my, one of my biggest, my biggest uh, advantages was that my transition from standing down to ground uh, and this isn't for jujitsu this is for judo attack uh, was very very fast and the reason was that I trained it every randori whether they allowed it or not in the randori whether they did tachiwaza and then newaza I would always follow it down from tachiwaza to newaza and the transition is one of the keys, I think, you know, it's, um, it's keeping contact and making sure that you have these contacts. So I think that there are lots of things that uh, we could probably do. And I was just thinking about it now, actually, that um, we, we were thinking of all the different seminars that we could do from the dojo that we have here. Uh, of course, specialized uh, seminars, coach to coach education, uh, Tachiwaza, Newaza, Jujigatami, we could do all the specialized stuff. Um, but I think that one of the key points is the transition standing down to ground and, and how, how to uh, connect the two. And I think that they're important. But um, yes, there's going to be uh, uh, seminars uh, uh, specifically for the transitioning uh, from standing down to ground. Technical expertise in standing technical expertise in, in, in Newaza as well, and the differences between Judo Newaza and also BJJ Newaza. Mm. Okay. Because there's a time difference and, and you know, so, so yeah. I hope I answered some of your questions, but I, I actually, I, I'm of the thinking of my friend, you know, who uh, he's very good. He's been in a lot of, he used to work the doors and he- yeah, bouncers is, have the craziest stories. Yeah, and he has some crazy stories, and he's a reformed, uh, you know, so he, he would never go back to that way of life, but it was a very violent and uh, horrific time of his life, and yeah. uh, one, that he, um, one that he writes about, and also he's written books about. His name's Jeff Thompson, so you can look him up, and uh, he's a, a very um, well-read uh, very well educated man and uh, he has uh, some great philosophies uh, on self-defense. Mm, okay uh, so for example you say you talk about the transition and how to get close and yeah. I, I understand osaikomi is a very uh, valuable tool when it comes to controlling someone and really not hurting them and also you know there's nothing more frustrating than being stuck under someone and you really cannot do anything so I think we all know the feeling. Um, <laughs> yeah. But for example, like stuff like um, unconventional atemiwaza, you know, not just do this, you know, like a, a slap, a legitimate slap, or, you know, someone coming and like a really big shot, you know, these types of scenarios, someone cornering me into a wall, uh, you know, uh, it, there's like, I understand people are training them as well as, you know, your regular randori and, the stuff that we do, you know, like the Olympic judo style. Uh, so do you think training these will not, you know, help in any way? Or like, is it just, I don't know, like, I don't know what's going to be in the seminar. I really don't know. But uh, don't you think that there should be a room for training these, you know, scenarios? I think so. I mean, you've got to think about how, how often are we ever in a situation like that? Not that often, hopefully. Uh, if we're training those kind of situations, and like I say, Jeff Thompson, uh, he had um, a, a group of students and they, 
uh, often at my club, actually, I mean, they, they would train these specific uh, scenarios oh. and uh, and they would, re but they were doing it three, four times a week, oh. you know, so it's not just once every week or once every two weeks, it was all the time. Yeah. And okay. the power of command as well was, was part of it because mm -hmm. Uh, the expression, because sometimes ass asserting yourself uh, confidently is very important, you know, because it's always uh, the ones that don't want any trouble or, you know, uh, go into um, uh, flight mode. Yeah, uh, they're, they're normally the ones that, that people go for, you know, but the ones that assert themselves. And I remember that from his uh, seminars was very uh, key because uh, he was very uh, assertive and very loud and very aggressive. And uh, I think that uh, they would think twice, you know, but I think it's how often uh, and, um, and obviously the level as well of instruction, because uh, of course that plays a big part, whether it's judo karate, whether it's boxing or, you know, what, whatever defense or self-defense uh, that you practice, it, you're as you're as good as the the instruction that you get. So, get yeah. the best instruction is is a really key point. Yeah, I mean, we cannot just start the program and just like hey, you know, go do no. stuff. No, we cannot. No, you never know what's gonna what what comes to fruition. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, that's something that I've 